Hey, I know this one game popular, popular. But like follow when your light goes. Uh -huh. I know it's you, nothing impossible. Connected to my armor, bro. Shining like a light bulb. Umamu Yahuwah, Malahu Yah, Barak Yahuwah, Moez Yahusha, Malahu Yah, I'm the Steve Rabbi Yahuwah, Umamu Yahuwah. Shalom, shalom, beloved family, all esteem to our great King Yahuwah Yahusha. This is Watchman Azariah who coming to you on behalf of Yahuwah's chosen people's assembly, Barak Yahuwah. Now, today is the day where we will dive into, as you can see on the screen, the Abarit Dabarim. Now, what does the word Dabarim mean? The word Dabarim, the word Dabar, D-A-B-A-R, it means word. So, with the Y-M on it, the Yad and the Mam, or the Ma'im, it makes it plural. And now it's Dabarim, which means words. This is also the correct name for the book that they mistranslate to being called Deuteronomy. This is the abrit name for that book. It is Dabarim, which means words. When you read, as I said, if you read the first five books and read their first chapter, their first verses, they will give you the translation for the abrit words. Let me show you again. Let me share with you again the word Barashid. Ba means in. Rashid means beginning. Barashid means in beginning, not in the beginning. The he, the man with the arms raised by himself, the letter by itself would be the word for the, e h e, the. So if it's Baha Rashid, then it will be in the beginning. But it's Ba Rashid, not Baha Rashid. It's Ba Rashid, which means in beginning. And when you read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in beginning, Yahuwah created this and that. When you go to Shamut, Sham is the Abba word for name. Shamut makes it pure, which means names. And if you read chapter 1, verse 1, and these are the names of such and such. U, Ya, Kara. U, the Wa by itself means and. Ya, that's his name. Kara means call. U Yahkara and Yah called, or and Yahuwah called. If you read chapter 1, verse 1, it tells you it reads exactly that. And Yahuwah called the sons such and such. Dabarim, and these are the words Bamid Bar. Bamid Bar. Bamid Bar means in wilderness. You go to chapter 1, verse 1, that's what you see. So in each chapter, in the, each verse, first chapter in each first verse, it gives you their proper translation. But here we are today having words such as Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, and all these other words. That does not mean what the Hebrew word should be. It does not tie or bring you back to the Hebrew word. So this is also why learning the Arborite is also important because we are losing the context, we are losing, losing the meanings of what Yahuwah made them to be. And know what we have is, is what man is making them to be. And Yahuwah says in the Torah, do not add or take away from his word. If you read in Revelation again, he says anyone who adds or take away from this if you add to his word, he's going to add these plagues to you. And if you take away from it, he's going to take away his promises, the portion that you should receive. So we should not add or take away from his word. We're taking away the power and we're adding different things. We're adding pagan words, pagan names, and all these things that are spells and witchcraft, curses, words of curse. That's what we're doing. So this is why going back to the operate is also important because we get to understand the true meaning of these words. Then the context, then the scriptures will start to make a lot more sense. A lot more sense. Barak Yahuwah. So this is the Abarit, Dabarim, Abarit words, Hebrew words. It reads from right to left, which we already learned from the letter, um, videos 
We have no IVF, Joe. We already know that. Just to give you a reminder, the culture is Eastern. It's a concrete process, which means we use our five senses. We would use words that would express our thoughts and ideas through the five senses, where we can see, smell, touch, taste, or hear. So if you would tell someone how oh, um, angry you are, the Hebrews, they would see anger as, the, as someone's nose being cleared. Flaring, the flaring of the nose or the nostrils. So once you're breathing heavily and hard and that nose keeps opening and closing aggressively, that's how they will see someone as being angry. So they will say they are slow to nose. We read that in the in part one, slow to nose. But because of the thought process that we are, because of our culture today, because we have been westernized, our thought process has changed. We're no longer using the five senses. We're using abstract words, things that cannot be seen, smelled, touched, taste, or heard. We're using words that makes no sense. Perfect example. I'm hungry. Can you see hunger? Can you smell hunger? Can you touch it? Can you taste it? Can you hear it? You don't hear hunger. You hear your stomach, the 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 the, the Body parts of your stomach. That's what you hear. You don't hear hunger. Another word. Uh, the word, let's say beautiful. Sky. Rain. This is what the Western culture has given us how to express these words. With, with words that are not action. With words that cannot see, touch, smell, or hear, or taste. Now, if, you, if I should say, you know, I'm tall as a tree. I'm like a tree. I'm telling you about something that you can see. I use the word tree to describe myself. I'm tall as a tree. I'm like a tree, which means that means I'm either tall as a tree or I'm planted solid as a tree. There's so much things that I, that I can be used that can be expressed by using that one tree because a tree is tall has deep roots, it's this, it's that, whatever the case may be, it's a large, whatever. It's a more better word to use to express yourself, things that you can see. You know, I'm like a river. A river, we can see it, we can smell it, we can touch it, we can taste it, we can hear it. And it runs, it flows, and all these things. So this is how our ancestors, they will use words that can be seen, smell, touch, taste, or heard. That's a small recap how loud we are. All right, so now let's let's get into some words. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Abba Yahuwah. Thank you, Abba Yahuwah. All right, so the first word that we want to show you, we're going to do some simple words, basic words, Barak Yahuwah, so nothing too hard, nothing where you won't, where you'll be you know, too difficult for you to understand. These are very simple words that are not difficult to understand. First word that we got on the screen, Barak Yahuwah, is the alab and the bat, or the bait. So we have alab, bat, or alab, bait. Now this letter would be an A. So let's go down a bit. Let's change back the font to English. This would be A, B. So this is A, B. Now, this word looks familiar for most because you would know it as this with two Bs. So you would know it as A, B, B, A, which is Abba. Or some would know it as this, A, B, A, Abba. And you would know this word as being Father. But as you can see, there's only one A. The reason for the second A is because of the sounding of the second letter. Remember the bat or the bait makes a ba, ba sound. So you have an imaginary A right here. So this A is, is imaginary. It should not be here in the breakdown of it. So this A is imaginary. So this is just the sound because the b, 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 
Go back to the lettering uh, videos and you'll see the sounding of each letter that they mean. This is why the A is there. So it's not A, B, B, A, or it's not A, B, A, but it's simply A, B. The Alab and the Bay, that's the simple word for father. Now, as I said, this word, we know it to be father, right? We know this word to be father. Now, that's the simple and the abstract meaning for this. But what is this true abrit breakdown definition, concrete meaning for this word? That's what we're looking at today. Now, the concrete meaning for this word, we would have to look at the letters to get this. Now, we have the alab, which is the head of an ox. And we know that one of the meaning is strength or power or leader. Now we have this, that's the host, which means family are in, is the picture of a host. So if we should use what we're seeing, strong host or strength of the host. No, what would be the strength of the host or the strength of the tent? What would make the tent strong or the host strong? The strength of the host would be, or the tent would be the tent host. The tent pose is what makes the, 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 the hole strong. So this is the strength of the tent or the host, the pillars. So with that understanding of identifying the letters first and their meanings, now we identify what the word means, and it's the tent of the pose or the strength of the host or the strength of the tent. So that's the tent pose. So with this understanding, now we understand what the rule of the father is in the family. He is the strength of the family. He is the one that holds the family up. The father is the one that holds the family up. Barak Yahuwah. Bruma Mu Yahuwah. Thank you, Abba. So the father holds the family up. That together. I'm going to show you who holds the family together. So, the alab and the bait, strong host, are strength of the host, strong tent, strength of the tent. What makes the host or the tent strong? The tent poles are the pillars. So the father is the one that holds the family up. So the word Abba means tent poles, or strength of the tent, strength of the host. That's what the word Abba means. Strength of the host, Strength of the tent, which is the tent poles, are the pillars. So that's the rule of the Father. That's who Yahuwah is to us. When we say Abba Yahuwah, he is the strength of the family. He is the one that pulls the family up. Rumamu Yahuwah. Now let's look at another letter, Barak Yahuwah, and another word. Now we're going to change the this letter from being a bait or bat to a M. <laughs> So we still have the A. Now we're going to change this from being a B to an M. Still got the imaginary A because this is the mom or the mai, and the mom makes a ma, ma song. So this is alab maim or alab mom, which would give us a ma, a ma, a ma, a ma. This is ama. No. In the simple terms, this word would mean mother. Mother. Ama, mother. I'm ama, mother. The simple term, this word would be mother. But in the concrete, because we're trying to find the Asian path, we're trying to see the Asian word. In the concrete, we would have to identify these two letters. Now we have the strength again, and we have water. So this would be strong water. No, in our time now, what would we identify as strong water or strong liquid? What would you know today to be a strong water or strong liquid? Let me show you. Glue. Glue would be the word, the meaning for ama, glue. Or you can say this. Strength 
of water or strong water. Strong water or strength of the water, which would be in our time today known as glue. So the mother, she is the glue of the family. She is the one that holds the family together, not up. The father holds the family up. She is the one that holds the family together. So if you're building a house to be in modern time, um, how we do it here or in some places, some places would use you know drywall or dry cement or cement and all that stuff. So first you need to have the pillars. Then you need to have the cement that holds the house together. So the father is the pillars and the mother is the cement. That's what a mom, a mother is in the family. She is the glue of the family. So strong water would be the correct translation for this word, Amma. Strong water or strength of water. And that we would know as today as glue. So the mother is the one that holds the family together. She is the glue of the family. The father is the strength of the family. That holds it up. One holds it together, one holds it up. So when the father is, is at the foundation holding it up, the mother is holding it together. And that's how you have a strong family, strong unit. And that's why today, in today's life and, and age, that's why you're trying, that's why you see them trying to get rid of the father. That's why you see them today getting rid of the fathers in our communities, in our families, in our homes. Because they're trying to get rid of the strength. They're trying to get rid of the one that holds the family up. The mother can only hold it together, but she can't hold it up. If there's no one under her holding her up and the children, then guess what? You got a broken home. You got a broken family. And that's why so many families today are broken. Because they don't have the foundation. Doesn't matter if you have the mother. The mother alone cannot do it. The father alone cannot do it. Because if you have the father and no mother, well, guess what? He's only holding the family up. He doesn't have the support, the assistant, his rib to help hold the family together. So the two are important, but the main part is the foundation. You got to lay the foundation first, which is Yahuwah. That's why he's the Abba. He's the father. He's the foundation in every family, in every marriage. Without Yahuwah being in your family, in your marriage, then it's going to fall apart. That's why you see so many families and marriages being destroyed today, especially those who are not wedded, who made a vow in Yahuwah. If you made a vow to JC, that's not a father, that's not an Abba who's going to hold you up. A covenant, a vow in JC, in Hashatan, that's why so many broken marriages are out here in this world. Because these vows and pledges that have been made in the name of JC is not to Yahuwah, it's not recognized by Yahuwah. That's not a marriage covenant in Yahuwah. That can be nullified. But a marriage covenant in Yahuwah cannot be broken unless through death. Divorce cannot break that. So that's why today the world is so broken because they don't have Yahuwah. He is the foundation of the entire universe. The heavens and the earth, everything. He is the creator. He is the beginning. He is the end. That's why this word is so broken. Because we have taken Yahuwah out of our lives, out of the family. Hashatan did that very same thing with Adam and Hua and the messengers. And he's doing that very same thing today. It's not just in black lives or black homes. Because many will say, well, that's what's happening in America. They're, they're taking the fathers out. They're pushing them into gangs and drugs or throwing them in the prison. And uh, we don't have a, that's why there's so many broken families in America, broken black families in America. No, it's not only black families. It's the entire world. That's broken right now because Yahuwah is not in it anymore. Trust in Yahuwah with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. We're not doing that today. That's why we have been thrown back into the curses, into slavery. So, at the end of the day, the two works together. But you got to have that foundation. Makes no sense. That's why so many 
single moms, they struggle. They try their very best to raise their child in the way that they should be, but it's hard because that's the job and the role of the father as well. Without the father being there, that's a broken family. It doesn't matter if you send that child to the best schools, the best this, the best, all that nonsense and all that. Without the father, without your core in that child's life, that child is scarred. That family is scarred. So, that's the word for father and mother, and that's their true meaning and understanding. That's the rule. So now you understand your rule as a father or a mother. Now you understand your rule as a parent. Structure in the family. Now let's look at another word. And this is one that I want to share as well to get some better pronunciation. Not just the meanings, but pronunciation. Another word that I want to share with you guys so you can better understand some words is this word right here with the hot. Many persons would recognize this word. It is really popular or familiar. Now, this is the Aleph again, does not change. We're not going to change it for right now. We'll change it shortly to another word, Barak Yahuwah. So we're just going to use it for this word and another word. Then we're going to change the first letter. So we still have the Aleph on the screen. Now we have the, it's not a ladder, it's the tent wall, it's the hot. And remember, this is C H. It makes a ha song. The C is silent. No. This word is this letter is C H. We have here on the word on the screen A C H and this would be for most brother. For most you would know this word as brother, right? Barak Yahuwah. But this is also not the strong meaning of this word. Looking at the letters, let's use the letters to get this meaning. We have the Aleph again, which means strong, strength. Now we have what? The tent wall. This is a picture of a tent wall. So we have strong tent or strong fence or strength of the fence. Now what does a tent wall do to the family or the, the house or your land? It gives what? There's a strength of the tent or strong tent or strong fence. A fence gives protection. So a brother should be a protector. Protection in the family. He's the protector in the family. A brother is the protector in the family. That's why in most cases you will have sons that are very protective of your family. So I saw this news where this family was being attacked or robbed by, I think, three robbers. And there was this little boy. I think he was about maybe eight, there about 10, there about. And he was so protective of the family, even though these guys had guns and all this stuff. This little boy was so brave. This little child was so brave that he took one of his toys <laughs> and he threw it at the robber. He hit the robber in his head. And, and the robbers, they were so confused. They were so afraid because they didn't want to shoot him or hurt him because of his boldness and his bravery. Maybe they didn't have any bullets in those guns. But he was so bold. He was so protective of his family that he used one of his toys and he threw it at the robbers. It hit one of them in their head. And because of the boldness and the bravery of this young lad, they got afraid and they left. They probably got a few items, but they did not got a lot more because he had his mom there. I think he has um, a few sisters there, and he was protective of them. So that's why you have a lot of sons in the family that are so protective of their family because that's what the Arabic word means, strong tent, strong fence, rather, strong fence. They are protectors of the family. They give protection to the family. So that's what the brother is. So this word right here, the word for brother would be A-C-H, which would pronounce ah, ah, not ah, not ah. This is not a K, not a K. Watch the video, but the letters, you'll see which letter is the K. 
This is not the word. If you look at, look this up for yourself, check the Strong's proof is always there. Check the Strong's for yourself. This is the letter that you will see. You will see the hot. A, the alap, and the hot, not the cough. This is the abrupt letter for cough. In the modern, you can see what that looks like. You can look that up for the modern. So that's the letter for K. So it's not an ark. It's an ah. Simple as that. Like, it's like when you feel pain and you're like, ah. That's how you pronounce the word for brother. Ah. If you want to say my brother, you put the Y on it, the Yod on it, or the Yod on it, and it's ah, he. Ah, he. So you put the Yod right here. All right, that's the Yod. That's the Yod. So you put the Yod right here. So that's ah, he. It's the same for father. If you want to say my father, it would be Abi. Abi. Abi, which means my father. Mother, Ami, which means my mother. Ami. Mami. It sounds a lot close. That's why we say Mami. Ami. That's where we get it from. You see, this is this is what we're trying to show you guys. These words that we're using today are not. Does they did not came out of thin air. They are from somewhere. A lot of the things that we're seeing today, doing today, they are from somewhere because Hashitan cannot create anything. He is a creation. The creation cannot become the creator. Yeah, who is the one that creates? Hashitan does twist and pervert a lot of things that we're doing today. He has perverted the earth. He has pervert, perverted us. He has perverted Yahuwah's creation he cannot create so that's why we say words like mommy ah, ah, me similar so the word for brother is ah and for my brother is ah he ah he that's how you pronounce this word so it's not a k it's not a ah, key is ah or ah he. Now let's look at the one for sister, Rakehua. Now this one we would have to throw in the some more letters. We would have to throw in like the wa. Where is it? Nope, not that. Right. So complicated to find the wa on this keyboard. Nope. Here it is. The wa and the ta. So that would be ahut. Put it here. Ahut. Ahut. Not akuti or akote. Not a k. Akuti. Akote. That's not the pronunciation. This right here. This is not the Arabic word for sister. Or my sister. Akote, Akuti, however you want to pronounce it, that's not the proper pronunciation. And this is not the spelling either. It's not A C H O T I. Yes, based on the dialect of your tongue, you may sound the words or the letter different. But the spelling should remain the same. Not because you pronounce it that way, it doesn't mean you should spell it that way. That's where we go wrong. And that's why we lose the meanings. That's why it's so hard to find the true meanings. That's why we lose the context. Because we're going based off what we hear or what we think. Not what is true. Not what is fact. And we see this in today's life. Like with the belief. That's why we have so many belief systems. Because people are going off what they think the scriptures, this scripture mean. What they think it should be. What they think they're getting from Yahuwah. When that's not the fact, that's not the case. There is no witnesses to prove this. I have witnesses to show you. As I said, there is no IV of Jew in the Aubrey. So it could not be an O, it could not be an I. So this spelling is wrong. So by you adding these letters, you're not saying the true letter. It's not a coat. A coat. It's none of these things. It's a hoot or a hooty from my sister. So this would be a U, not a C. So we have the Alab, we have the Hat, 
we have the ten peg, the wa, we have the ta. A C H U T. Ahut. That's the word for system. Now with these other letters, remember this is the protector. That so the sister she would add the sign, the covenant, the mark. She's the helper. She's the helpmeet. So that's the sign, the covenant that Yahuwah made to Adam that man should not be a by um be alone. And he brought Hua the help me to assist the ah, uh, the brother, the male, the father, the husband. That's the role of a woman to assist. Females out there that are believing in feminism and all these things, stop doing that. You are being deceived by a spirit. You are being deceived by a Jezebel spirit. Remember, Jezebel was the wicked queen that was killing all the righteous person. She was, in fact, the leader because Ahab basically submitted to her. She was the one that got Elijah a bit free. And Yahuwah had to let him know his place and stand his throne. And she was killed. That's why today you have the spirit roaming around, deceiving females out there, thinking, oh, I can do anything a man can do. No, you cannot do any and everything a man can do. You can do some things we can do. We can do some things you can do. But we cannot do everything. I cannot do everything a female does. You cannot do everything I do. Our rules are different. As I just showed with the word father and mother, Abba and Amma, the rules are two separate rules. The father is the foundation, the strength of the family. The mother is the one that holds the family together. Two separate rules. If you're being the father, who's being the glue? I'm, be, I'm the father. You're trying to be the father. Who's going to be the glue? Are we going to ask the children to be the glue? The family is already broken because we got two persons trying to be one rule. That's why Yahuwah says you can't serve two masters at the same time. You will love one, hate the other. You can't have two fathers. You can't have Yahuwah as your father, the creator, and have the devil as your father. No, that won't work. You can't have two fathers. That's why Yahuwah says, call no man father. What he's saying, call no man your spiritual father. And I see this foolishness happening in Christianity. And it used to, it, it bothered me a lot. Because I was wondering, like, why are we saying this? Like, where did this term come from to call a man your spiritual father, your spiritual dad? We have one spiritual father who is Yahuwah Yahusha. The earthly man, he's just a blood father. You have one spiritual father and one earthly father. You know you want to have two spiritual fathers? And then the thing is, if you notice with Christianity, it all stems from paganism. That's why we do it, because the devil told us to. The devil told us to go against Yahuwah's command. Yahuwah says, call no man father. And here we are calling these pastors and leaders and apostles and bishops our fathers. Oh, he's my spiritual father. He's my spiritual dad. That should not be the case, everyone. Stop doing it. Again, going back to females, stop believing this nonsense. You're not equal to a male. You are not. No one else won't say to you, I will. They want to ban me, ban this channel, whatever, so be it. We will not water the truth over here. We will not be afraid to speak. If they close this channel door, we open a new one up. This won't stop the word of Yahuwah. Censorship, shadow banding, it will not stop the word and the truth and the name of Yahuwah. Yahuwah's word are quick, sharp, and powerful. Nothing or no one can stop Yahuwah. So yes, YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all these social media apps, the, the elites, all these major families and all this who controls the internet, yes, they can put a ban or shut a ban or whatever on the, 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 the spreading of the truth and the name, but they cannot stop it because if they do that, we still are in the streets. If you throw us in the prison, we are still going to talk. Yeah, who is going to still rise up? Someone else to continue to spread, spread his name or his truth. So as you can see, no one can stop it. So we are not afraid to speak against these things. 
because we're not doing this for the fame. We're not doing this for the money. If we were, then we would be afraid to speak these things because the puppet masters would be behind the scenes letting us know, checking our scripts before we even come on here to speak. They would be making sure that our script lines up with their agenda. And they would take out whatever they want and put in whatever they want to make sure it fits their agenda. That's why you have a lot of artists, a lot of movie stars, and all these celebrities that cannot really speak their minds. That's why most persons, you see them reading from a script because they are just puppets. So understand your rule. Walk within your purpose. Walk within your rule. The same goes for in the assembly. If you are not a leader, do not operate as a leader. If you're not a prophet, don't operate as a prophet. Operate in the gifting and the role that Yahuwah has given you. That's how you will have an effective assembly, an effective family, an effective body. If the arm should be, you know what, I'm going to be the leg. And the leg should be like, oh, I'm going to be the hand. How would that work? How would you walk? Now are you going to walk on your hands? Then your feet are going to be operated as your hands. That will not work. That will never work. Yes, you can walk on your hand, but for how long can you be upside down? And what the hands are designed to do, the legs are not designed to do. So yes, you can walk on your hands, and yes, you can use your feet for certain things, but not everything. That's why life is so messed up today, because we're not operating in all you who are designed us to. So the word here is a hoot. Not a kuti, not a kote. It's a hoot. Barak Yahuwah. Now moving on to another word that has the hot within it. Another one that's mispronounced and misspelled a lot of the times is the word for family, which we have the ma'im. Let me start from the back to the front. So this is the word. Let me put it here. Let me transliterate it. So this would be an M S H P C H H. So you have M S H P Right. Now let me help you with this one. This is the M right here. This is the Sona mix. This is the Ma, Ma. And then we have the Shin, which is H, H. So this together is Mash, Mash, Mash. Then you have the P right here, which sound it makes is the Pa, Pa, P. So this is the sound in this letter. The sound, let me highlight the, the letters that are not there so you can properly understand. So all these letters that are highlighted are just for sounding purposes. If we should remove them, then you will only have M S H P C H H. Let me show you. Now, because of our Western belief and our Western thought process. This would make no sense to us. To an operative person, this would make perfect sense. They would know exactly what you're saying right here. They would know exactly what this word is. They would know how to pronounce it. But to us, we would not even know how to identify this part of the word. In. We would not even know how to identify this. And even if we do and put it here, this is what we would end up with. M-S-H-P-C-H-H. -H -H. How do you pronounce this? Now, this is when you put the A's within. This is when you throw the A's in. Now, I'm going to explain that shortly. Barak Yahuwah. Let me highlight them again so you can see. Barak Yahuwah. All right. So, let's go into the word. So, as I said, the M, you put these two together. Put these two together. The M and the SH, the Mam or the Mayim and the Shin will give you Mash, Mash. 
the Mai makes a ma song. So that's mash, mash. Now the pe, you pronounce it by yourself because you got two letters here. If you had another letter, then you pronounce the, the pe with the other letter, then these two. So this is mash, then you have the pe, which gives you a pa song, pa, pa. Then you have the hat and the he, which you know, the hat or the a is a ah song. Ah, ah. So mash, pa, ah. Mash, pa, ha. Mash, pa, ha. Mash, pa, ha. Mash, pa, ha. It's not mash, pa, ka. Mash, pa, ha. This is not the spelling of this word. It's not maspaka. That's not the pronunciation or the proper wording or spelling. Because again, as I said, there is no K. If you should take out this letter and make it a K, then you are changing the meaning of what this letter or this word would be. Just like with Abba and all the other words. So this is maspaha, which means family. Water in Revelation, we saw water being described as people, a multitude of languages, our tongues, our nation, which is just basically people. The shin means opening or to destroy, the pay means scattering, and the, the tent wall means outside or divide, and you have a person. So, our family, you know, is the, the blood we're related by blood as well. So, another one can be either family, persons, multitude, or blood is the opening to scattering. Or the blood destroys scattering outside the tent wall, which is a purse. So there's many ways to look into this. So this is family, the word for family. So it's mashpaha. Moving on to another word that's mispronounced. Because we're almost finished with the word for the We have one more word to look at, rocket war. Moving on to another word that's mispronounced. So let's get back the hat in there. Let's get back the wa. Nope. So wa again. Nope. 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 Yeah, right there. So the wa in there, and let's get the rush. Let's remove this word and identify these letters. So here we have the R. We have the U. We have the CH. Now, this word looks familiar for most. This is how you would know this word. It's an A. And you pronounce it Ruach. But it's not Ruach because this is not a K. It's not a K. It's not Rook. It's not Rook. I've seen persons to spell it like this. R-U-K-H. It's not Rook. Or some spell it without the H. Rook. It's not Rook. Whether with the H or without the H. It's not Ru. It's simply Ru. Ru. The abrit word for spirit is Ru. 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 The abrit word for spirit is Ru. So this word is the word for spirit. Ru. Ru. So the head. So you have the head of a man. So the head are the beginning, the, the, the top. Who is at the top? Yahuwah. The head are the beginning, or the head of man adds protection. That's the tent wall. So the word rule, that's what his spirit does. That's what his spirit does for us. It adds protection. Protection from what? Protection from unclean spirits. Protection from the enemy. Protection from the devil, the demons that are out. That's why he gave us his Ruach Adash. This called those spirit to give us protection. The head of man, who is the head of man? Yahuwah is the head of man. He adds protection to us. The Ruach Kadash is protection from unclean spirits that are trying to enter within our body. Because remember, our body is a temple, the dwelling place of Yahuwah. Hashatan wants his spirit to be within us. So that's why he gave us his Ruach Kadash, not only to teach us, and to bring back things to remember us, but also to protect us from unclean spirits and serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. 
So the pronunciation for this word and the proper spelling is R-U-C-H. There is no A right here. This would not be Ra. Even if there was an A, the A would be right here with, with the R. But it would not be the case because once the Wa is there, you would pronounce the R with the Wa, the U. You would pronounce these two together. If it was a B, it would be the same thing. Boo. If it was an A, though, the A becomes silent. Does that the word for light? Or. Word for light? Or. But there's an A there. The A becomes silent. So it's or. Or. So this would be ru. Ru. Burak Yahuwah. Ruma. Bu Yahuwah. Oh, yeah. All right. Final one that we're moving on to. Now we'll be out of here. This one may be familiar to you guys. Burak Yahuwah. Shalom. Shalom. It's not shalom. It's not shalom. Remember, there's no O in the opera. That's how the Jewish people, that's how the Khazarians pronounce it. The Khazar, the Khazarian Jews, that's how they pronounce it. Shalom. Shalom. There's no O in the opera. It's shalom. Or shalom. 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 Or shalom. That's how the proper pronunciation should be for this word. Remember, this would not be the simple meaning because this word is the name of a mighty one. P-E-A-C-E. -E. If you have not seen the video that I've done on this, exposing this, go check that out. It's on the channel. His name in the Latin would be P-A-X. But it says that he is common in commonly known in English as this name. So that's not the name. So the best word to use or the best substitute would be calm or calmness. Calmness or calm. No, what would be the concrete breakdown for this word? I mean, man, this is a beautiful word. And this gives us a lot more understanding. Know why Yahuwah would say this in Matthew, in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 10. No, we will look at the letters to get this meaning. We have the shin. Another word or another meaning for this is to destroy. This, Troy. Now we have the lamad. Not a meaning or, for this is authority. Oh, I still big on screen. Oh, let me get it a bit smaller, or else it's not going to work. Ah, uh, front size. Let's change. So we're on 48. Let's see how that looks. Still a bit big, but we'll work with it for now. All right, um, so we have the destroy, authority, added or connected. Added or connected, the ma'im, another word for this is disorder. So added or connected, you can say connected. Connected to this order. So the word shalom means to destroy the authority connected to disorder. So when you say shalom to someone, this is what you're saying in the spiritual sense of it, in the spiritual realm. To destroy the authority as connected to disorder. Look at the letters. You got the two front teeth, which destroy. You got the shepherd staff, the lamad, which is the authority. Then you got the wall, the tent peg that adds that connects the uh, the ma'im, which also is disorder, because some part of the water you got a calm part, then you got a part that's rough, then you got a part that's out of control. So that's why the meaning disorder is one of the meanings for this letter. 
So to destroy the authority that's connected to this order, that's what the word should do mean. That's why Yahuwah says, find out which host is worthy. If the host be worthy, let your shalom come upon it. Now you're asking Yahuwah to destroy the authority that's connected to this order around the surrounding of this host. To protect this host. You're basically asking Yahuwah to protect this worthy host. Now if the host is not worthy, if it has a strong man and all this stuff, then you cannot pronounce the shalom upon it. Man, this is really powerful. This is really deep. This is why the Aubrey is truly important, everyone, to learn it. Because we learn the true meanings. We will get back our true power that has been given unto us by Yahuwah Yahusha. We receive back the authority that Adam and all the others lost. That's what we're trying to gain. By going back to this ancient path, remember, Yahuwah says in Luke 10, 19, Behold, behold, I give unto you power or authority to tread on serpent and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, if we're still using words of curse, words that demons are not afraid of, then how can we trample on them when we're not using the true words that we should be using to get rid of them or to give esteem to Yahuwah, to give praise and honor to Yahuwah? Our beloved watchman Yeshai has started a um, uh, sequence teaching where he did this. Don't mention it. Pagan devils have entered our KJV. They have entered on this language as well. We looked at the words or the names that they have given us, the titles that they have given us for Yahuwah. And we know the words of G-O-D, Lord, and all these other nonsense. They have given us some pagan praise words as well. <coughs> words such as H-O-L-A-M-A-D Y, which is the name of a pagan demoness who goes by the name H-O-L-A-M-A-D I-K-A. That's her true name. That's her full name. That's her wrong name. That's not giving praise or esteem to Yahuwah. That's giving praise and esteem to a devil. That's calling on a devil's name. We cannot use these words to Yahuwah and expect Yahuwah to receive it. Yahuwah once winked at our ignorance, but no cause awe to repentance. We need to learn and do better. It's the same, it's the same concept. When we were in Sudanic religion, we thought we were doing it to Yahuwah. But then we found out that it's pagan and we walked away from it. It's the same way we got to look at these words, everyone. We thought these words were okay. We thought these words were giving praise and adoration to Yahuwah. But know that we found out that they are not. We got to do what? We got to walk away from using these words. If you continue to do so, then you're walking in ignorance. You're walking in disobedience. You're walking in rebellion, especially if you know that's rebellion. If you know and still refuse to not turn, not walk away, not step away from, that's rebellion, disobedience. How can you expect to have any part in Yah's kingdom if you're not striving to be righteous? Barak Yahuwah. So I just wanted to share these words so you can look at these words, break them down for yourself, see what meaning you may come up with, Barak Yahuwah, see if it's similar or close to these. You're gonna you're gonna find out the beautiful the beauty of this tongue of this language. You're gonna see how much this tongue is pure, is kadash. I have another research to do and is to look into this word word language. I think it's tied to a name of a mighty one. I'm not sure yet, but I'm gonna have to search it out and look into Barak Yahoo. Now Houthi highlighted that for me. So I'm gonna check it out. So I haven't found anything on it yet, though, but still going to do some more research because we know that they're trying to hide these informations. They're trying to, you know, remove some of these informations from our, you know, search engines like Google. There was a time where I was telling someone about um, something that was pagan and the person I found it easily. It was simple search. Typed it on YouTube. It was so easy to find. I didn't have to go into any site or search three pages. It was right there. As soon as I typed it on Google and pressed enter, it was right there in front of my face. 
Now, when I told someone about it, like, let's say a week after or two weeks after or a month after, the person said that they could not find it. And when I tried it myself, it was hard to find. It took me a while to find this information. So we know that they're trying to, you know, remove some information and try to suppress the truth from being exposed, trying to suppress our the, 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 the lies from being exposed, but it will. Nothing can stop that. So Barak who was so research, study to show yourself approved unto Yah. Study everyone. Research. Do not be ignorant. Yahuwah says he wants wing. Do not use this, this stupid excuse. Oh, Yah knows my heart. So that gives you the right to continue to walk in, in rebellion and in foolishness and ignorance. Yahuwah says, be not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Be wise as serpents and harmless as dove. So don't give me no stupid excuse to say, oh, Yah knows your heart. That's just you being a wicked and lazy servant. When Yahuwah gave the talents and everyone did something wise, productive with their talents, what did the one say? Oh, he were so hard and this and that and yada, 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 yada. And I buried it. That was a stupid excuse. And for that reason, he lost that talent. Do not be like that one lazy and wicked servant. Because you're too lazy to reprogram your mind to relearn. Because that's the thing why a lot of persons are so stuck in their old ways. Their flesh, their mind are too lazy. You need to start to get your mind. You need to start to exercise your mind. Take your mind to the gym. How do you take your mind to the gym? By going into the word of Yahuwah a lot more. By trying to learn these words. Practice becomes perfect. But for some, they are too lazy. They don't even want to try. They're, 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 they're not even lazy at this point. If you don't even want to try, if you don't want to accept it, you're just straight up wicked. You're straight up wicked. But at the end of the day, the choice is yours. You were warned. So when that day comes and you go to Yahuwah with that nonsense, Yahuwah will have it on record that he did hold you to stop doing this or stop saying this or whatever the case may be. And you chose not to. You will not have any excuse whatsoever. Barak Yahuwah. So these are the words that I have for today, Barak Yahuwah. Uh, next week we'll have some more words that we can look into, break down and all that stuff. And see the beautifulness of Yahuwah. The next time we'll also go into Yahuwah, Yahusha's name, Barak Yahuwah. And another word as well that ties in with his name, Barak Yahuwah. I've done a, I've done a video on this, but I'm going to do it again. So next time we'll go into his name, Yahuwah, Yahusha, and Ahaya Ashar Ahaya. Is Ahaya, is Yah's name in Ahaya. And all this stuff is a higher his name and all these things will break the stone as well. So you can understand these names and what they truly mean. Barak Yahuwah. Ruma Mu Yahuwah. And all this theme all praise and honor belongs to Yahuwah Yahusha who made all of this possible. We can never thank him enough for that. We can never repay Yahuwah for all that he has done for us. We're truly grateful for Yahuwah to have so much Assad, loving kindness, compassion on us, and for keeping his promise towards us that he made to Abraham a long time ago regarding us. We thank you, Yahuwah, for not changing your mind on us, for not turning your back on us, from not breaking your covenant so that we may have life and life more abundantly. Rumamu Yahuwah, Yadata Yahuwah, Tuda Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. And I, we would like to say yadata, thank you to everyone who has subscribed, liked, shared, supported this, this assembly, this ministry in any way whatsoever, shape or form. We appreciate you all, Rumamu Yahua. This is what, towards Yah's kingdom. This is not towards Azari. This is not towards anyone in this assembly. This is towards Yah's kingdom and the awakening that's taking place, Rumamu Yahua. Barak Yahuwah, who is Yahusha, Allah, Yah. Until we see each other again, Yah is willing. Enjoy the rest of your day. May Yahuwah Barak you and Shamar you. May Yahuwah show respect unto you and also guard you this day, this yom.
Umamu Yahuwah. Shalom, shalom, beloved ones. Rock Yahuwah. It is Yahusha. Allah, Yah.